two, one. Okay, I think it's recording. It's doing the yeah. thing? It's, it's surely thing. recording, right? Yes, it is. Yep. Hi, Adragonella. Hi, <laughs> Lullabelle. <laughs> I thought, um, let's uh, record this for uh, Wildhood Family Live uh, on Facebook. Live. Yeah, I mean, this this is live for us right now, but it won't be live for them. But I, I don't know, it's, I, I'm, there's probably a technical possibility to do this live with people watching at the same time, but if it doesn't involve Zoom, I don't know it. So uh, we're just gonna do this, okay? <laughs> good, that sounds good. Uh, so yeah, uh, like a little rehearsal, um, uh just doing the thing we do best which is something we haven't done in a while so we might as well rehearse it yes i guess that sounds good to me that's not good to me so it's a song some stories a song yeah where are you now these these days just outside edinburgh in the lovely gore bridge it's kind of sunny which is nice it's mm. nice where are you nice i'm in, in in glasgow and so that's pretty good as well it's it's quite sunny like I'll, I'll 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 sit here so I have less sun in my face. Is it working? Yeah, that's cool. Seeing that's white lights in, in 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 my eyes right now, so that's this works. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, start with the song. Do you get a song yes. first. Song. With my trusty little ukulele. Rocket ship high in the air. Yes, I'd like to visit the moon, but I don't think I'd like to live there. Though I'd like to look down at the earth from above, I will miss all the places and people I love. So though I might go, I'll be coming home soon. Cause I don't wanna live on the moon. I'd like to travel under the sea. All the fish everywhere. Yes, I travel on the sea, but I don't think I'd like to live there. Though I'd like to come down there by if I wish, but there's nothing to do where your friends are all fish. And an oyster and clam aren't real fun to we, so I don't want to live in the sea. I'd like to visit the jungle here, the lions roar. But none of them permanently So if I should visit the moon I will dance on the moon beat and then I will make a wish on a star And I wish I was home back again Though I'd like to look down at the earth from above I will miss all the places people are known Cause I don't wanna live on the moon And it's not like I can leave the house right now And if I could go somewhere I'd rather visit you, Dragonella Or maybe go to Wildhood Or anywhere in a field really with some nice people uh, Anything like that would be quite preferable uh, I mean, I like Glasgow's nice But I don't wanna see people um, So in the meantime uh, whatever happens, I don't want a little moon. Don't want a little moon. <laughs> Hello. When you make a mistake, improvise. <laughs> That's glorious. That's so nice. And you're quite right. I'd like to live on the moon, but I'd definitely just like to go see people. That would be nice. Soon. Soon. We'll do it soon. Yes. Oh, there's somewhere I'd really like to go back and visit. I, um, I've told this story before at Wildhood, so I'll have a go again. So I'd like you to use your imaginations and imagine that it is a warm and sunny day. They're quite rare in Scotland. You're soaking it up right now. 
So it was on a warm and sunny day that I was walking down the streets in suburbia. Um, so you know, the outskirts of town where everything looks the same, the houses are the same, the fences are the same, the plant decorations are the same. And I was walking along and I was looking over the fences and over walls and into rooms because I am really nosy, if I'm honest. Um, if I'm polite about it, I'm intrigued. But I'm also quite tall, very handy when being nosy. So yeah, you can properly look over walls. So I was having a good look over some walls and suddenly I stopped because there was something glinting in a garden. It was, they were like stones and they were so perfectly smooth and carved. And with the sun shining on them, these stones were gleaming, kind of the same shine. You know, when you've just brushed your teeth on a morning and they're like particularly shiny and that, that really fresh feeling, they looked like that. But they were these stones were all mixed in amongst flowers. Um, if I remember rightly, I think it's technically a rockery. A rockery, possibly very old fashioned garden element, but a rockery. And they were so intriguing. And I, th I thought there was something in the back of my mind that they really reminded me of. And I, it was a lovely day. And I thought, well, I could just go and ask. And so I walked up the garden path of this house and it just looked like any other in suburbia. And I knocked on the door, knock, knock, knock. And nobody answered. So I tried the doorbell, ding dong. And the door slowly opened. And in it, stood a normal looking man yes every day normal bloke t-shirt trousers nothing about him was that exciting or interesting um he looked very polite and he did ask can i help i said like, yes your rockery there's these shining stones in your rockery and they look really familiar, but I can't quite work out what they are. And I just wondered if I could ask about your rockery. And at this point, he looked right at me and said, my rockery. I'm like, yeah, 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 your, your rockery. Um, would you like to come in and I'll explain? Now, that was unusual and I wouldn't normally go in, but he looked so friendly and I told mum where I was. So I went into the house just to find out more about this rockery. And he offered me a cup of tea as I walked into a very normal looking house. And I sat down on the sofa and I thought, well, yep, this is a relatively comfy sofa, not brilliant. We've got a bit more of a connoisseur around sofas during the time of COVID. So I kind of, now I know that it wasn't a great sofa, but it was an okay sofa. I sat on the sofa and I looked around and the house just looked normal. There was nothing in it that was interesting or exciting. And he gave me a cup of tea. So I took the tea and I, th I thanked him for the tea. And um, I, I took a sip. And it was, um, well, it wasn't Yorkshire tea, it was boring tea. I'm from Yorkshire so the only good tea is Yorkshire tea and I took a biscuit as he offered me a biscuit and it was oh digestive boring biscuit yeah. yeah everybody has their own boring biscuits and I took the biscuit and I dunked it into the tea and it dunked into the tea and oh most of the biscuit was in the tea and I um, sipped the tea and oh, now the biscuit was on my nose. And, and, and with all of this, I was trying to be polite, but I was more excited about the stones outside the rockery. And at this point, this normal, boring man leant forward and says, can I ask you a question? Now, I thought I was the one there asking questions, but no, he wanted to ask whether or not I believed in dragons. Now, 
yeah of course I do actually totally believe in dragons I think there's <laughs> loads of ma- yeah dragonella it's in the name I, I think there's so many things in the world that are magical and, and mysterious and that sometimes it just takes a particular moment to spot them but yeah dragons I think could be in this world they do exist of course I believe in dragons there's little bits of evidence not everywhere but we often just ignore it and we try and be really overly logical about it and I started to go on at him about why I believed in dragons and and he just sat very calmly and nodded his head and there was something about him that started to change he sat taller looked broader sort of filled the room more than he had a moment ago and there was a fire in his eyes that was starting to sort of become visible spark and he's like okay so your answer is yes you do believe in dragons yes yes I do believe in dragons yes in my overexcited manner I I I hadn't even used the word yes properly yes yes I believe in dragons It's like, well, if that's the case, then this conversation needs to be somewhere else. Now, things were starting to get strange and I was totally intrigued as this man stood up from his boring normal sofa and he sort of glided from the room. And in my excitement, I crashed and banged behind him, wondering what could possibly come next. And he smoothly, serenely moved through the house as I knocked things over and into the garden. And not turning round, he goes down to the bottom of the garden and to the garden shed. And by now, I'm thinking there must be something truly magical in the garden, maybe a dragon. There's got to be something in the garden that this is just too weird, too peculiar. And so we're getting to the shed and I'm thinking he's going to open the door and it's going to be spectacular. And he opens up the shed door. It's a shed. (sighs) Now, I don't know what you've got in your shed, but in mine, there's hedge trimmers and a bicycle and ping pong balls. There's a story to those. And as we walked into the shed, we went past all of his normal things. So there was, yeah, lawnmower, chairs. I was thinking, what is going on? This doesn't make any sense. And he's still very calmly, very statuesquely moving through this shed. And even looking from behind, there's something different about this man. From the moment I met him, suddenly it changed. And as we get to the back of the shed, out of nowhere, he produces a golden key, holds it up, and then carefully puts it into the wall of the shed. And then, click, and says the golden door appears in front of us, glistening and gleaming, knotwork and intricate carving, and it's the whole size of the shed. And this door slowly, steadily creaks open. That's a really big door. (laughs) Clearly no WD-40 in the shed. (laughs) And this golden door, once open, there's a room behind it and it's huge. Now the walls tower up above me. I can see past the man that these walls go taller than the shed, taller than the trees in the garden, taller than Edinburgh tenements. And, and it goes on. But the shed was at the bottom of the garden. This doesn't make sense. So I run out of the shed around to have a look, thinking that there's just some sort of very elaborate extension to the shed, but there's nothing there. Just a patch of grass at the back of the shed. This doesn't make sense. So I go back into the shed and the man is looking at me and he's got an eyebrow raised and he says very simply, it's just magic. Just a good bit of fairy magic. 
course, of course it is. And and I, and in my excitement, I just I don't think about it. I just agree. I'm just like, right, okay, cool. Yeah, of course, it's just magic. And we step into this voluminous room, this huge. And, and smells lush and, and, and filled with interesting, weird, wonderful things, stuff on shelves and tables that goodness knows what it did, but it looked odd, like cogs and glass jars and domes and bookcases and bookcases and bookcases going on and on and towering above us. And that smell of lush, rich leather, the binding of books surrounding us. And the room, I mean, it, it was a cave almost, a, a lustrous cave filled with glinting colours and fabrics and so much more than my eyes could take in. And as we walked through the room to what looked to be some of the most comfortable chairs I have ever seen, as we moved through, I noticed that there were piles, piles of teeth like next to the chairs and propped next to bookshelves and in cabinets. And then I also spotted them framed on the wall and different sizes, different shapes. They looked a bit like shark teeth, but there were other teeth that were huge and others that were tiny and, and others that were strange shapes, but there were all so many different types of teeth. Now, of course, I start to feel a little bit nervous at this point. This is strange, but magical, but strange. And he, he settled me down in one of these comfortable seats, a truly comfortable seat. And he gave me another cup of tea. Thankfully, this time it was a good cup of tea. It was a Yorkshire cup of tea. <laughs> and he gave me a good biscuit. So it was a chocolate biscuit. Got quite a connoisseur of biscuits over the last couple of months. <laughs> and, and I took the tea and the biscuit. And even as I dumped the tea and the, bis the biscuit into the tea, I was looking around because there was so much to take in. And there was all of these teeth and the biscuit was a good biscuit. So as it came out of the tea, fill hole. And I sipped the tea and the man had sat in front of me and he was sat elegantly, still, serene and just waiting waiting for my excitement to ebb slightly so that he could actually have a conversation with me and just watching as I took in all of my surroundings and he looks at me and he says perhaps I should reintroduce myself I was like yeah great who are you what is going on he's like I I am the dragon tooth fairy. It meant that the teeth made sense. That made a lot more sense. But I sat there in shock as he began to explain how he acted like the human tooth fairy, but for dragons. You know how you put, when your little teeth fall out as a kid and you put the teeth under your pillow at night and the tooth fairy comes. And when I was young, she'd take out the tooth and switch it for 20p. I like, the more people I've told this story to, the more I found out about inflation rates and that, yeah, <laughs> people get a lot more for teeth now. Obviously the tooth fairy has to work a lot harder. And, and so the dragon tooth fairy does the same, but for dragons. So at night, baby dragons, as they've lost their teeth, they'll put the teeth beneath their nest, beneath into their cave, wherever it is that they're sleeping. And the dragon tooth fairy will stealthily, quietly sneak in and without being seen, just like the human tooth fairy. I mean, we don't know that the human tooth fairy is a lady. It could be anybody. But it's the same with the dragon tooth fairy. The dragons have no idea who the dragon tooth fairy is, but they do know that if they put their tooth into their sleeping place the next morning, it will be exchanged. Now, dragons don't get 20p or a pound. No, instead, dragons get things like pieces of gold, uh, jewels to add to their caves, their collections. Some dragons get marshmallows, but that's for a very particular breed of dragon. So it depends on what type of dragon as to what the tooth fairy puts in exchange for the tooth. Exactly, like dragons like people are vastly different. 
And he explains all of this to me, he tells me about how he learnt about dragon teeth, how he learnt about the differences in dragons, how he's been to various different mystical and magical creatures, conventions of teeth. Apparently the human tooth fairy is a very lovely lady, but she only does one part of the world. There are other tooth fairies who do other parts of the world. And as with the dragon tooth fairy, he's not the only one. There are others in the world. Uh, and he explains the different districts, the different areas, the different types of dragons, how he's had to learn to travel in the cover of darkness, how he's had to climb mountains, swim beneath seas, climb trees, go into caves that are beneath massive chasms. He's got very good at rock climbing. He's got very good at dangerous situations. He also has to do all of this without being seen. And he does it quietly. He explained that he trained to be a ninja in Japan over 400 years ago. I didn't at the time think about that, but now I realize he's probably incredibly old. And that explains also how he moved so silently. And he, like, to be perfectly honest, he told me so much. I can't even remember all of it now. But it was a fascinating conversation and such a good cup of tea at the same time and he started to look a little nervous as our time together went on and you know how very polite people start to get a bit a bit nervous in their seats when they need to leave rather than ask to leave they, they sort of fidget slightly he was starting to fidget and he's I said do you need to go and he's like well yes because it's getting late and I need to be about my work. There will be baby dragons and young dragons who are losing their teeth, who are expecting me tonight to exchange those teeth. And I can't disappoint them. He's like, as much as I'd like to talk for further time, I, I can't let them down. I was like, of course, of course, I totally understand, totally understand that. And so I got up to leave. And as I got up to leave and I started to look around, he, he moved to the side and he stood next to a writing desk for a moment. And as he came back, he put a pouch and a note into my hand. And he said, uh, just make sure that you read the note before you get to the garden gate. And I was like, thank you. And he's like, and the pouch, what's in there? That's a gift. That's one of my first I, and I thanked him warmly and said goodnight. And as I stepped out of the golden room and or from the huge amounts of books and away from the stories of the dragon tooth fairy into the shed, I saw him pick up his cloak of shadows, whip it around himself, and he began to, began to wave goodbye as the door slowly closed behind him. <laughs> And the door vanished and I was left in the shed. I, I couldn't get over just what had happened. And so I walked out to the shed and into the garden, shocked and, and excited still. And as I got into the garden, I realized it really had got late because it was starting to get dark. And as I went past the house, I stopped in the front garden and I looked at the rockery again. And now I truly realise what those stones were. They were huge lumps of dragon tooth. <laughs> and that's why they shone so brightly in the sunlight and now gleamed in the moonlight. And as I was just at the garden gate, I remembered the note. And I took the note from my pocket and I opened it up and I started to read. And in the top uh, right hand corner was the dragon tooth fairy and his address. I won't say that out loud, but uh, he was very old fashioned. He wrote his address in the top right corner. Dear Dragonella, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for your visit. I really do enjoy meeting people who believe in dragons. But please don't tell anybody else where I live. Tell them my story. Tell them that I exist. Tell them about dragons and the tooth fairy and the dragon's needs for dental care. But do not tell them where I am. I can't cope with that number of visitors. I don't have enough tea and biscuits. And I do need to keep my existence secret. So remember the address at the top of this page. 
and then this note will self-destruct. All right, okay. And then magically at the bottom of the page, and I don't know why I was surprised by now, but still I was surprised as numbers began to appear, five, and I started to panic. And I thought I'd better read this address. <laughs> Four, I was trying to remember the address. Three, and I'm desperately remembering the address. Two, uh, and as I got the address firmly lodged in my brain, one, <laughs> and then zero. And the note just disappeared into sparks and ash and fell to the ground. It was one of the most exciting and unusual encounters I've ever had. And I left the garden that night and I must admit, I was smiling and desperately trying to remember everything. And the present, that still is in a very safe place where it stays. And if you come visit me at a festival or you see me around, maybe I'll show you. But yeah, I really hope that we get past these restrictions so that I can go back and visit again and find out more about dragons. But yeah, Dragon Tooth Fairy, he's real. It's so exciting. It was a good day. <laughs> Lush. Thanks. Yeah, I like sharing that story. It's a good one to share. A Dragon Tooth Fairy, that's so cool. He pretends to be a dentist. <laughs> dentist by day, dragon tooth fairy by night. Exactly. Great. <laughs> that's his mask. Yeah, that's so. his incognito. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's mine. Oh, and I don't know if you saw, but uh, uh, my cat, uh, Lucy, Lucy Fur, she, she really liked the story, so she came and say hi. And now oh, she no. has fallen asleep again. So, so that's that. Um, but there is a song that might might make her come back. Uh, oh, good idea. Another song that, that we've, we've played a lot. Um, so just as a last little song to finish off this little live session. Um, let's sing The Cat Came Back. The cat came back the very next day. Yeah, the cat came back. She thought he was a goner, the cat came back, he just couldn't stay away. Now old Mr. Johnston had trouble of his own, he had a little cat that just wouldn't leave his home. He tried and he tried to get the cat away, he gave it to a man going far, far away. But the cat came back. The very next day, yeah, the cat came back. Thought he was a goner, the cat came back. He just couldn't stay away. Well, the man around the corner said he'd shoot the cat on sight. He loaded up his shotgun full of nails and dynamite. So he waited and he waited till the cat came walking on the phone. And 97 pieces of the man is all they found. But the cat came back the very next day. Yeah, the cat came back. The thought he was a goner. The cat came back. He just couldn't stay away. Well, he gave it to a little boy with a dollar note. He told the boy to take the cat up a river on a boat. He tied a rope around its neck while it must have weighed a pound. Um, oh no. They dragged the river, but only I the think it's boy the boat. Boat. <laughs> But the cat came back. Yeah, that's the important bit. The cat came back the very next day. Yeah, the cat came back. Thought he was a goner. The cat came back. Not the lyrics, but the cat came back. So that's good. Well, the atom bomb fell the very next day, and the H bomb fell in the very same way, and then Russia went and England went, and then the US of A, the entire human race was left without a chance to pray. But the cat came back 
They sometimes just disappear like butterflies and just disappear. Just disappear. <laughs> Sorry. That's what rehearsals are for. It is. <laughs> so we're ready for the fields. Yes. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you. That was good fun. Thank you, Steve. It's been a while. It's been a while. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, everybody at Wildwood Family, for having a look and having a listen and sticking with us, uh, especially me for getting live. <laughs> but it's all fun. And we're hoping to see you guys soon in the field to do this. And uh, yeah. maybe you guys can just remind me in the moment of what the lyrics are. And it should all be <laughs> fine. And come with your stories, come with your own songs. And um, yeah, all good stuff. Cool. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye Dragonella. Hi, Lalabelle.